This week on The Choice. Well, it's the last day here in Newfoundland. We have rain, we have wind, so we're going to go hunting. We have the Thompson Center. We have a good guide. We can still get it done. Let's go. Yeah, that's a big caribou. The choice is about three things. Real hunting. Going after the animal of your choosing with the weapon you own. Real adventure. From the mountains of Canada to the desert to Mexico. But most of all, it's about real people. Hunters with families, jobs, and dreams. Their skills will be put to the test. Every situation is different. Success or failure. It all comes down to the choice. Drop the pack. That one's for you. Oh, yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this week's The Choice, and this week, well, do you know where we're at? <laughs> this week, we've snuck into Cabela's up on the mountain, and we're going to get in trouble for this, Shh. so let's just get... Oh, she's quiet. Okay. This week, we're heading up to Newfie. Newfie Bob Efforts. Bob Efforts hunting. Caribou, moose, we're going to head on up there, do some hunting. This week's lucky logo is True Glow. When brightness counts, come on, True Glow. Shh, quiet. Watch the True Glow Security. logo. We'll tell you what to do with it. Okay, we're good. Okay. We're gonna get in trouble for being up here. I know, we better do We should just get up. going. We get, let, let's get going. And, and Bob Efforts. Go, Bob Efforts hunting, new fee, go. True Glow, Lucky Logo. No, he's over there. It's See? okay, go go around that way, go. Is this cool or what? We I feel go. like I'm goat hunting. gonna get me in trouble, I swear. <laughs> Well, we traveled yesterday and today. We made it into Gander. We're waiting for Bob to come pick us up. We have all our luggage ready to get after him. What's your name, buddy? Kelly. I'm Brady. Here you go, Joseph. Nice to meet you. Need a hand? Yes. I got lots of hands. <laughs> Our first night, Bob flew us into a great little cabin on a beautiful lake. We got settled in, shot the bow and the rifles, had a great first meal, uh, turkey dressing and all the fixings. The second morning out, Bob flew us into Spike Camp, which turned out to be an old trapper's cabin. We landed at the beach, loaded up all our gear and carried it all on our backs for about a half a mile into the cabin. What a great place to start a base camp. We made it. Well, we made it to our camp. If you're going to a uh, spike camp, you're, you're usually flowing out of the main camp. It's a more rugged hunt, a lot of walking, a lot of glassing, everything come on your back. Uh, you don't have no shower here. This is how we do it. And your guide is usually doing the cooking. So 
is a little rougher, but normally you do see better animals and it'll pay off at the end of the week when you go home with your trophy. I, I get to check my beans. <laughs> we got everything carried in and settled into the cabin and pretty soon we were up on the ridge spotting for woodland caribou. I had a caribou tag and within a couple hours we were watching some great bulls come across the open country. Where he walked in, it's been about a mile and a half. We still gotta follow him. He's in here somewhere. seemed like a two mile hike, we were closing in on a great bull, and with the TC and the Hoyt with me, I knew I had a pretty good chance of putting a tag on that bull. Yeah, that's a big caribou. That's a monster, for sure. No trouble killing him, right? For sure, as long as, you got the, as long as you got that TC on his back, he won't get away. As the bull trotted off, I was able to grab the TC-300 and take a crack at him. You on him? Did I get him? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. We chased that bull all the way around there. We had him coming, and you couldn't see him right there when he was broadside. Oh, I had him right there. Had him. I love to bow hunt, but I'm also a hunter, and to get within 25 yards of a great caribou and to end up taking him with the rifle was, was just an incredible experience. Right, look at this. Look at this. This is what we've been chasing for the last couple hours. That's how heavy he is. Some great horn on him, huh? Oh my. You have to look pretty hard to see one better. Ta-da! 
It's worth all the sweat he's put us through. <laughs> Sheldon had the TC, he handed it to me, and he didn't get out of, I don't know, he got out about 60 yards, 70 yards, yeah. and made the mistake of turning around looking back, wondering what those goofy guys were doing in those trees. And uh, now it's, now he knows. Beautiful caribou. Second day of the hunt, now we got three days to chase Brady's moose around that we heard grunting over there on the valley when we walked through. So, what awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. <laughs> That's some fun. <laughs> My leg was going. <laughs> when I get the shakes, there ain't nothing better. Nothing better. The one I need a break. You'll hear a big splash when my head hits the water. It was only our first afternoon in Spike Camp. We had a great woodland caribou down and we had three or four days left to chase moose for Brady. Hunting moose here out of a spike camp is uh, pretty much right from the doorstep. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. Say the last of September to the first couple weeks of October, he's turned to the rut pretty heavy, so you can call them or hear them calling. Gives you a better advantage to getting close to them or they're giving themselves away. If that don't work, well, you get to a high point and you glass for them and find them and, and do, a, do a stock on them. You want to get downwind of them because they got uh, very good hearing and great smelling. You need all that factor into your vantage point to get close to them, especially if you're hunting with a bow. I've been guiding now for Bob Effort for nine years. Every year we knock down two, maybe three, 50 inch moose or better. And overall, we average between 40 to 45 inch moose in these trophy camps. Well, it's our second day in spike camp and Shelton hasn't walked our legs off yet. We still have them attached, so we're gonna go ahead and try to walk a couple miles and maybe kill a bull right here at the Thompson Center or the Hoyt. We have the choice. Ready to do her? Yeah. Let's do her. Hunting in this wilderness is, is awesome. It's like it's never changed since the beginning of time. And you're you're watching these animals and the and the wilderness that it's it's just a beautiful place to be, and it's a great feeling to hunt such wild country. Well, we've made it to our vantage point. We sat here for a couple hours this afternoon and do some glass and try to catch a bull moose. It's the name of the game. <clears throat> Ready to open. Shelton just spotted the moose and uh, it's walking through the thick pines. He didn't get a really good look at it, but he said it looked like a pretty big one, so we're just gonna see if we can get a better look at him. You really have to consider how far away from camp a moose is before you take off after him. You really want him to be close enough to water so the float plane can come in and pack him out. If not, you're gonna end up carrying that moose maybe four, five, six miles all the way back to camp. And a moose is several times bigger than a bull caribou. Well, we've got the bull spotted. Uh, the only problem is we can't get across the river. There's too much water in it. We've come down a mile and a half. We just can't get across. But uh, So I guess he's got a free pass. You win some, you lose some, eh? Right. Well, we're just still hunting around that little hill. We were just glassing, and uh, he's going to build a little fire. We're going to warm up, try to dry out a little bit. Sounds good for lunch. How awesome is this? Well, the sun's starting to break through a little bit. We have a little grub in our belly. Campfire's got us dried out. Our spirits are lifted. We're gonna go sit back up and do some glassing for some moose. Back to moose hunting. The 
it's about two in the afternoon, the wind's howling, but the rain has stopped and uh, the sun's peeking out every once in a while. So we're on our next vantage point. Just keep looking for moose. They're here. They just need to come out and play. Well, just like any big game hunt, you're gonna run into a situation that weather is gonna kick your butt. I mean, you can, the outfitter cannot control weather. Bob no, is always in the air. And what happened was, is there's a big storm front coming up and hurricane that actually hurricane, up the East Coast. hurricane, yep. And there, it's pouring rain, it's foggy. Bob can't fly. You either don't fly or you risk your life, and he's not about to do that, especially no. for him or his, or his hunters. So, the guys are stuck in caribou camp and can't get out to moose you know, camp. And Z shot a great caribou. The problem is, is they gotta get to moose camp. That's right. Weather's not conducive. So what would you rather do? Take a risk or hunt another day? little bit of fog and rain we're trying to wait let it get lifted out of here and Bob's supposed to pick us up too so we still have a few hours to chase the moose so yeah the pond would be like touching its back or whatever yeah. trees yeah we've spotted some trees well we had really high winds today uh, we chased a moose a couple miles, wind up getting at the bottom of the river and not being able to get to it. So, when we were coming back up to the top of the mountain to do some blasting, this is what we found. I think it's cool. It's really cool. I'm taking them home with me and they'll be in my living room forever. So it's been a pretty good day. Just really windy and rainy. We spent the next two days stuck in camp. Fogged in, rain. Couldn't even hunt. The fog that came in so far, you could only see 150 yards when you were up on the ridge spotting. There was no way of locating a moose in that open country. I don't believe we're going to make it out this afternoon. The fog's got us blocked in. Bob's not going to be able to come and get us. But we have the rain gear drying, nice warm fire, nice cozy cabin. I think we'll be just fine. Life is good. Sheldon's got pancakes. Living large, day seven. Still fogged in, but we have pancakes. A nice little breakfast, waiting for Bob. Our last scheduled day in Spike Camp, we carried a lot of our gear down to the beach to wait for Bob. That old trapper's cabin was perfect, and we had wood for heat, lantern for light, and a propane stove to cook on. Home sweet home. <laughs> we ate a lot of great meals, did a lot of laughing, and played a lot of cards in that old cabin. It sure added a lot of memories to that trip. Thank God I was with great guys that made the time fly by and we just had to sit and wait until Bob could get clear skies and come in and get us. Well, we were all packed up yesterday. Plane never came, so stay the night here again in this little hotel we got. I'm gonna pack up again. Bob's gonna come today. Check that out. Pretty cool. Uh, here in Newfoundland, we have a very good population of moose. There's uh, something like 160,000 here on the island. Probably, I think we had the most moose per square mile in the world. Uh, but when you get into uh, bad weather, heavy wind and rain, they don't like to show, show themselves very much. It could be tough hunting then, but when you get nice weather, you'll see moose. Now oh, that's a good sight right there. there for four days. Yep. If I get lifted at all. Nope. We ain't been able to spot glass, do nothing. An adventure. Yeah, that's right, it's what you call it an adventure. Yeah. This was a hunting adventure here. Was 
this an incredible show or it what? Was awesome. Bob Effort, Congrats. thank you so much. But you know, weather we really screws you up. If you happen to see the Lucky Logo, which is True Glow, brightness counts, count on True Glow. If you saw it, log on to TV.com, click on Lucky Logo button, fill out some information next week. Yeah. Hogs and Gators. Thanks hey. for watching this week's The, the choice. choice. Run. So.